In this video, we solve the following example problem. Calculating the forces in the highlighted members within this Howell roof truss, and we also determine whether each of these members is under tension or compression. This is Learn Civil Engineering, where we combine theory with example problems to make engineering concepts engaging and easy to understand. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our content and excel your engineering knowledge. In a previous video, we covered the theory for the method of sections in detail, and we saw that the general steps to the method include starting by calculating the reaction forces at the supports, then dividing the structure into two parts by making a cut through the members we want to solve, then, whilst treating each side of the truss as its own static structure, we need to solve one of the substructures by taking the sum of all forces to equal zero, and finally, we take the moment relative to a node with more than one unknown members. With that summary, we'll begin to solve our example problem. We have a roof structure which is in the shape of a Howe truss, supported by a roller at node A and a pin support at node L. All the horizontal members of the truss are 2 metres in length, and the vertical members are 1 metre, 2 metre and 3 metre in length from the outer to the inner members respectively. We also have external loads of 20 kN being applied to node B and node D which are acting on the structure perpendicularly to the line AF. Using the method of sections, we must calculate the forces in members DF, FG and GI and determine whether each of these members are being subject to tension or compression. And you're welcome to pause the video here to attempt this question for yourself. So now, let's get into the solution. Before we begin to solve any of the forces, there are a couple of things we can do to help us with the rest of the problem which involves determining the horizontal and vertical components of the forces being applied to the structure. And generally, I'd recommend doing this for most questions within structural analysis, as they greatly simplify the following steps. First of all, we can acknowledge that we can use the concept of similar shapes to simplify the external loads. Similar shapes are shapes of the same proportion, and so can become identical after being scaled, rotated, or flipped. Here we can see that the right angle triangle with a width of 2 meters and a height of 1 meter can be scaled and rotated to help us find the horizontal and vertical components of the 20 kN external forces. The horizontal and vertical components of the external forces will be needed for resolving the horizontal and vertical forces later on, so let's work out these components. To start, with a horizontal length of 2 meters and a vertical length of 1 meter, Using Pythagoras' theorem, we can calculate that the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which equals the square root of 5 metres. Now, for the horizontal component of the external forces, we have the external force of 20 kN over a length of root 5 metres, and we have the horizontal component, Fx, over a length of 1 metre, with the angle between the external force and the vertical plane being theta. Therefore, Fx is the opposite side of the triangle, and the external force is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Using trigonometry, we can work out that Fx is equal to 20 kN times sine theta, where sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which equals 1 over the square root of 5. Therefore, the horizontal component of the external force, Fx, equals 20 times 1 over root 5 which equals 8.944 kN to three decimal places. Now, doing the same for the vertical component, we have the external force of 20 kN over a length of root 5 metres, and we have the vertical component, Fy, over a length of 2 metres, with the angle between the external force and the vertical plane still being theta. Therefore, Fy is the adjacent side of the triangle, and the external force is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Using trigonometry, we can work out that Fy is equal to 20 kN times cos theta, where cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which equals 2 over the square root of 5. Therefore, the vertical component of the external force, Fy, equals 20 times 2 over root 5, which equals 17.889 kN to three decimal places. Having determined the horizontal and vertical components of the external forces, we can start to work out the forces in the required members. We will need to work out the reaction forces at the supports, RAV, RLV, and RLH, but before we do that, let's see where we will make our cut to divide the structure into two substructures. We have to find the internal forces in members DF, FG, and GI, 
so we will cut our structure through members df, fg, gh, and gi like so. And this leaves us with two separate trusses, which we will consider as independent structures from now on. For this example problem, we will consider only the left-hand structure, so we only need to determine the reaction force at node A before we can discard the right-hand structure. To calculate RAV, we will consider the entire structure, taking the moments about node L, as this eliminates all unknowns from the equation except for RAV. As the structure is in equilibrium, the sum of all moments about a point must be equal to zero. So, taking the anti-clockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of moments about node L is equal to 12 RAV plus 1 times 8.944 plus 2 times 8.944 minus 10 times 17.899, minus 8 times 17.899, which equals 0. Rearranging this equation for RAV and then solving, we get that RAV is equal to 24.598 kilonewtons to three decimal places. Having calculated the support reaction force at node A, we can now apply our cut to the entire structure and discard the right-hand side, leaving us with this. In order for our structure to remain in equilibrium, we must replace the cut bars with the internal forces as these will stabilise the support reaction and external forces being applied to the structure. Doing so, we have internal forces FDF, FFG, FGH and FGI, like so. Note here that we are assuming the sensors of the internal forces to be tensile, as they all originate from the centres of the cut bars and are acting in the direction towards the end of the members. Before we go on to the sum of the moments about any of the nodes, we are going to identify which members in the truss have internal forces of zero magnitude, and we will do this by inspection. To do so, we will temporarily consider the entire structure again. Starting by considering node K, for it to be in equilibrium, all forces applied to the members attached must sum to equal zero. If there is a tensile force in member KL, there must be an equal and opposite force to balance it out. And so, there would be a tensile force in member IK of equal magnitude. Now, let's say there was a tensile force in member JK. Again, we need an equal and opposite force to balance it out. However, we can see that there are no members attached to node K that would allow this. So therefore, the internal force in member JK must have a magnitude of zero. We will now apply this logic as we work through the structure. At node J, an internal force in member JL can be balanced out by an equal and opposite force in member HJ. However, with the internal force in JK equaling zero, there are no other members attached to node J that could balance out an internal force in member IJ. So member IJ has an internal force of magnitude zero. At node I, an internal force in member IK can be balanced out by an equal and opposite force in member GI. However, with the internal force in IJ equaling zero, there are no other members attached to node I that could balance out an internal force in member HI. So, member HI has an internal force of magnitude zero. And finally, at node H, an internal force in member HJ can be balanced out by an equal and opposite force in member FH. However, with the internal force in HI equaling zero, there are no other members attached to node H that could balance out an internal force in member GH. So, member GH has an internal force of magnitude zero. And notice here that we have just solved our first unknown, which will make solving the rest of our problem a lot easier. Going back to the left side of our structure then, we will determine force FDF by equating all moments about node G to equal zero. We have chosen this node to start as it eliminates the other unknowns from our equation. So, taking the anti-clockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments about node G equals negative 24.598 times 6 plus 17.889 times 4 plus 2 minus 8.944 times 1 plus 2 minus 6 over root 5 times FDF, which is equal to 0. Rearranging for FDF and solving, we get... FDF equals negative 25 kilonewtons. For member DF, as we assume the internal force to be tensile, and our value for FDF is negative, the force of 25 kilonewtons in member DF is compressive. Now, to solve the internal force in member FG, we will repeat this process, taking the moments about node A to equal zero, 
as this eliminates unknown fgi from the equation. Taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments about node A equals negative 17.889 times 2 plus 4 minus 8.944 times 1 plus 2 plus 6ffg, which is equal to 0. Rearranging for ffg and solving, we get ffg is equal to 22.36 kN, and as we assumed the internal force in member fg to be tensile, and our value for ffg is positive, the force of 23.36 kN in member fg is tensile. Finally, to solve the internal force in member gi, we will take the moments about node f to equal zero. For the last time, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments about node f is equal to 17.889 times 4 plus 2 plus 8.944 times 2 plus 1 minus 24.958 times 6 plus 3 times fgi, which is equal to 0. Rearranging for fgi and solving, we get fgi is equal to 4.47 kN, and as we assume the internal force in member gi to be tensile, and our value for fgi is positive, the force of 4.47 kN in member gi is tensile. So, going back to our original diagram, we can conclude that the force in member df is 25 kN and is applying compression to the member, the force in member FG is 22.36 kN and is applying tension to the member, and the force in member GI is 4.47 kN and is also applying tension to the member. If you did attempt that question yourself and got the correct answers, then well done. And to get notified when the next video is released, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.